All right, welcome. Uh, this video is going to be explaining uh, just a fast and intuitive method for solving some kinematics problems. Uh, definitely, it doesn't solve all kinematics problems, as you'll see. Um, and um, when it's this is good if the numbers work out well, but if you have you know crazy numbers, then you you probably want to just use some equations. But um, you know most physics problems are, are at least on tests on AP physics tests the numbers are pretty smooth they're pretty they're pretty easy to work with so this method is just a faster way to do things it's just a fast and intuitive way so you'll you can um, use it for estimating things even if you have um, numbers that aren't real nice uh, you can round them and if you round them then you can get close to the answer which sometimes is um, enough to do is just a check for multiple choice all right so here goes let's see what we got so um, it's going to make use of a few things one is the idea of acceleration so you need to intuitively you need to know conceptually what acceleration actually means and so an object that's accelerating at four meters per second squared it's going to change its velocity by four meters per second each second. That's what that means. It's going to change its velocity by four meters per second each second. It will either gain, it will either gain speed, lose speed, um, and if you're going not in a straight line, it can actually turn in such a way that it loses or, or that it changes its velocity by four meters per second. All right, so that's the one thing. That's a one big idea. And the other big idea is that average velocity has these two equations. Now these are only if um, you can only use this one if you have constant acceleration. So the problems that we're going to be talking about are only straight line um, problems where the acceleration is constant. You can't use this method if the acceleration is not constant. It's a, but in an introductory physics course, when you're first studying this stuff, that's usually what they do. They usually will tell you that the, the, it's a constant acceleration. Okay, and then the average velocity is just the displacement divided by the time. And so if you um, multiply both sides by delta t, then the displacement, where the thing gets displaced, how far the displacement is, um, is just the average speed times the time. Okay, so let me show you how this works in problems. So um, a typical um, problem that you could use this on would be something like this. So you have a car, and the car is um, going, it starts out at rest. So the car starts out with zero meters per second. And let's say you're told that it's got an acceleration of four meters per second squared. So the acceleration of the car is four meters per second squared, and they want to know how far will the car go in four seconds? So how far is it going to go in the four seconds? Okay, so if you know that it's accelerating at four meters per second squared, then every second it's gaining four meters per second of velocity. So after four seconds, you know, like after one second, it'll be going four meters per second. And after two, it'll be going eight meters per second. And after three, it'll be going 12 meters per second. And after four seconds, it's going to be going 16 meters per second. Okay, so I needed to understand what acceleration is to get that 16 meters per second. Of course, you, you could throw this into a kinematics equation and get the same thing. But, um, okay, now with that, then I'm just going to take the average velocity. So, like, your average velocity is, um, well, if you got a 16 on a test and a 0 on a test, you just add the two up and you divide by 2. That's how you get average. So, the average velocity is just the addition of the um, two velocities, the initial and the final, and divide it by 2. So, it's going to be um, 0 plus 16 0 plus 16 meters per second, oh, 16 meters per second, divided by 2. And so that's 8 meters per second. Okay, now what am I going to do with that 8 meters per second? Well, if you go 8 meters per second, imagine this car is not accelerating, but it's going 8 meters per second the whole time. It's just always going 8 meters per second. Then in 4 seconds, it's going to go 32 meters. In other words, if we put this into our equation here, in delta x will be the average velocity, 8 meters per second, in 4 seconds. So that's your v average, and then times delta t. So delta t is 4 seconds. So that would be, let's see, the seconds cancel, and we're left with 32 meters. 
Okay, let's try that again. Um, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna. Get, if you think you get that, you can pause the video and you can see if you can um, get the answer before I get it. Okay, so here we go. So we got a, a car that's moving along and um, it's going eight meters per second. Initially it's going eight meters per second and then uh, but it's got an acceleration of two meters per second squared. So that's positive and the, the two, both of these are positive so it's speeding up. We know the thing's speeding up and they want to know how far um, it's going to go in four seconds. Okay so go ahead and um, if you want you can pause the the video and you can um, try and get this yourself. But this is how you would do it. Okay, so in, that means that um, in four seconds, since it's gaining two meters per second of speed every second, after one second it'll be going 10, after two seconds it'll be going 12 meters per second, and so on. And so after four seconds it's going to be going um, 16 meters per second because it gains two meters per second every second. Every second it gains two more meters per second. So it will be going 16 meters per second. Okay, so your average velocity is just going to be the addition of those two divided by two. In other words, if you got a 16 on a test and an eight on a test, your average on the tests is, um, let's see, you do um, eight plus 16, that's 24. That's 24 divided by 2, so it'd be 12 meters per second. That's your average speed. So if you went, on average, 12 meters per second for 4 seconds, then the distance that you would travel, if you went 12 meters, in other words, you didn't start out at this speed and get up to that speed, but you just went this the whole time, then you would go um, 48 meters. Let's just try another one, give you another example. Okay, let's say this time your car is going um, 30 meters per second. It starts out at 30 meters per second, but now your acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Negative 10 meters per second squared. So they want to know how far does the car travel before stopping. Oh, okay, they want to know how, what its stopping distance is going to be. Okay, if you want, you can turn off the video and try this, um, but I'll show you this right now. Okay, so to stop, it needs to get to zero meters per second. That's what stopping is, zero meters per second. And it's going to be slowing up at 10 meters per second every second. So it's going to need three seconds to stop. So the, time, the stopping time, delta T for stopping, is going to be three seconds because um, after one second, it'll be going 20 meters per second. After two seconds, it'll be going 10 meters per second. And after three seconds, it's going to be going zero meters per second. Okay, well, using that then, um, your air, this, this, is, this final velocity is zero because it's stopped. So how far is it going to go? Let's see, its average speed is not 0 or 30. It's going to be, you add these up and divide by 2. If you get a 30 on a test and a 0 on a test, you're going to have a 15. So your average velocity is 15. See how we're using average velocity to get these distances? So if on average you go 15 meters per second on average for 3 seconds, then... Um, you're going to go 15 meters per second for three seconds. The seconds cancel and you're left with 45 meters. So you're going to need 45 meters to stop. About a half of a football field or soccer field. All right, uh, moving along. Next one. Okay, this car is moving um, at 40 meters per second. It's going to have an acceleration of negative 5 meters per second. How far does the car travel in 4 seconds? Okay. So, um, if you want, you can pause this video. But I'm um, moving right along. Um, so in 1 second, this car is going to be going 35 meters per second because it's got a negative acceleration. So it'll be going 35. Uh, 2 seconds will be going 30. Three seconds will be going 25, and in four seconds, 
it's going to be going 20 meters per second. Okay, let's use the average velocity. You get a 20 and a 40. You add them up and divide by 2, so that'd be 60 divided by 2 is 30. So the average velocity is 30 meters per second. And if you go 30 meters per second for um, 4 seconds, then you're going to go 120, 20 120 meters. So the, the distance that you can expect to travel is the average velocity times the time. So that's going to be 120 meters. A little over a soccer field or a football field. Okay. Uh, I got just two more, just to give you two more as examples. Okay, so this car is moving at 10 meters per second and um, it's got an acceleration of three meters per second squared. How far will the car travel in four seconds? Okay, you can, if you want, you can turn off the video and try it yourself. Okay, in four seconds, let's see, it's gaining three meters per second every second, so after one second, it'd be going 13, then after two, it'd be going 16 meters per second, and so on. So in four seconds, it's going to be going 22 meters per second. Okay, so what is the average there? So that'd be um, 22 plus 10, the average speed is 22 plus 10, that's 32. Uh, to divide it by 2, so that would be 16 meters per second. So how far are you going to go? It would be 16 meters per second, that's how fast you were going on average, times 4 seconds, so that would be, 40, be 64 meters. You're going to go 64 meters. Okay, one last one that's got a little bit of a twist. And so, um, what if we have a, a car that's moving along at 8 meters per second and has an acceleration of negative, a constant acceleration of negative 4 meters per second squared? Where will the car be 3 seconds later? So now, I'm not asking how far is the car going to go. Delta X is really the change in the location. And so where is this car going to be from its starting position? Uh, so so um, I want you to see something here. Let's see, after one second, it's only going to be going four meters per second because it's got this acceleration. After two seconds, it's going to be going zero meters per second. And then after three seconds, it's actually going to start to come back this way and it will have gained four meters per second in the negative direction. So it'll be going negative four meters per second. Okay, so let's find the average velocity. Now, the average velocity, it's really um, eight plus a negative four. So let's see, that average velocity is eight plus negative four is, um, is four. And then you gotta divide that by two because you're finding the average. So you add up this plus this. So that's four divided by two. So your average velocity is two meters per second. So if you, instead of doing all this fancy stuff, if you just drove the car at two meters per second for three seconds, then your displacement, not the distance you traveled in this case, but your, like how far you will be from the beginning, like from the start, will be um, eight meters per second. I'm sorry, will be the average velocity two meters per second times um, three seconds. So you're going to be six meters from the start, but you'll have gone um, further than six meters and then come back to six meters. So that's how that works. All right. Hope this helped. Bye.